say? Okay. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Okay, so um, today we're going to be talking about the body and how it's the first to know that it's time to ask for help. Um, so today is mostly going to be focused on doing a body scan and identifying the signs and symptoms of stress um, and just feeling like you're carrying too much. And it's with the intention of um, discussing asking for help in the next meeting um, or unless somebody wants to do a follow-up discussion on this training. So if you wanted to like walk through the body scan again and we can do that together as a group, totally do that. Um, so I'm going to actually start us off with a video and then I will do the demonstration. Okay, so the video, just one second, the video is by Dr. Tracy Marks and she's a psychiatrist in Atlanta with over 20 years of experience. And um, I specifically chose uh, a woman of color because that is just my preference for the evening. Um, just one second. I don't know if I've shared the volume. I want to share one more time. Share computer sound. Okay. Let me know if you hear this. Signs your body is stressed. That's what I'm talking about today. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks. If you're new to this channel, I talk about mental health education and self-improvement. I publish new videos every Wednesday, so if you don't want to miss one, click subscribe and hit the notification button. Even if you think you're handling your stress well, your body could tell you otherwise. And in this video, I'm going to give you seven not so typical signs that your body is stressed. So how does your body respond to stress? Well, cortisol and adrenaline are two chemicals that are secreted in the body under stress. Adrenaline is the fight or flight hormone and cortisol metabolizes sugar in the body to make it accessible to the brain. Cortisol also suppresses the body's immune response. So typical signs of stress include things like high blood pressure, poor sleep, racing hearts and heart rate. And these are the things that are related to adrenaline. Some of the atypical symptoms are things like teeth grinding or also called bruxism. And this involves clenching your jaw or grinding your teeth back and forth. And this can happen at any time. And you may notice that you say wake up with pain um, or you could even wake up with a headache uh, if you're doing this at night. And sometimes too much uh, teeth grinding can cause cracked teeth. Unfortunately, tooth grinding can be worsened if you have acid reflux. Wearing a bite guard at night can help, and you can get one specially fitted by a dentist, or you could buy a generic one at a drugstore. I've had both. The generic ones could be big, and it could be hard to fit in your mouth, and you got to even work hard to like close your mouth down. But in the custom ones, though, they're pricey, but they are much better because they just they fit your mouth. Number two, poor digestion. When your body's stressed, you can get decreased motility and slowed digestion. So this can feel like you get a stomach ache or some type of stomach pain or gas or bloating every time you eat. Slowed digestion can also lead to constipation. Why? Because as your uh, food moves through the gastrointestinal tract and through your intestine, it absorbs water. So if you've got slowed movement, your intestines are still drawing out water from the food or the fecal matter. So if it moves too slowly and you absorb too much water, then you can get hard stools. So even if you don't have hard stools, what this could end up looking like is that you don't go, you don't have a bowel movement very often. So instead of having one every one to two days, if you eat every day, if you eat every day, it should move through. So if you don't have one every one to two days, maybe you have a bowel movement every three or four days. So infrequent bowel movements and or hard stool and or stomach aches after you eat and things could be a sign that you're stressed. Another sign is sore muscles. Stress causes the muscles to tense up and you can get 
aches and pains in places like your neck and your back, even with mu without much activity. So you can get to the end of the day and just feel exhausted um, and even achy and sore when all you did was sit all day. You can help this by taking stretch breaks and also yoga is a powerful way to reduce stress. Next, your hair. Chronic stress increases cortisol levels, which promotes inflammation and free radical damage. And this can result in increased or accelerated graying of your hair. But hair loss is different. Alopecia areata is an autoimmune disorder that results in, in hair loss. And this can just kind of go and come and fluctuate over time and is not really related to stress. However, you can get excessive hair shedding because of stress and sleep loss can also um, disrupt the hair's life cycle leading to shedding. But the shedding makes your hair thinner versus what you see with alopecia where you get clean spots, usually cir circular spots uh, of hair loss. Next, weight gain. Chronic sleep loss also causes increased cortisol levels that affects your weight. And this may not look like you packed on 50 pounds because of it, but it may be more subtle uh, weight gain, like um, weight that just kind of creeps up on you and you just can't seem to lose despite exercising regularly and having a healthy diet. Number six, frequent colds. High cortisol levels suppress your immune system, so that can make you more acceptable to getting sick often. Um, are you someone who always seems to get sick every time it's flu season. Um, having a, a suppressed immune system also can activate or trigger dormant viruses like shingles, which is a herpes virus, or cold sores. So having an eruption of shingles or having frequent cold sores could be a sign that you're under a lot of stress. Last one, no sex drive. Increased cortisol suppresses sexual arousal. One solution or one thing that can help is exercise. Engaging in 30 minutes of aerobic exercise five days a week noticeably reduces stress and lowers cortisol levels. So these are some telltale signs of stress that show you that your body's trying to get your attention, that you're under a lot of stress, and this is how its reaction to it. If you have one or more of these signs, you need to work on managing your stress. You certainly don't always have control over your stress or the things that's causing the stress, but what you can have more control over is how you manage it. I've mentioned two ways to do this, the exercise and yoga. Another good way is using mindfulness meditation. I did a previous video on this and I'll... So what I like about her is that she was taking more of a holistic approach to it. So she was talking a little bit about what you might experience physically, stomach aches or grinding of the teeth or sex drive. Um, the other thing I'd like to do when talking about the body scan is just muscle tension. And that's going to be kind of the main focus of it. So when you're doing a body scan, um, I don't think I'll be able to back up that much. Can you guys still hear me okay? Okay, so um, when you're doing the body scan, you're getting nice and comfortable. You can do it laying flat and just put your arms out beside you, or you can sit and let your arms rest on your lap. So you can do palm down or palm up. I kind of like palm up because it feels a little bit more like meditation. So then you're getting nice and comfortable, and you're starting to take nice, deep, measured breaths. So you can do inhale for three seconds. Exhale for three seconds. And you're just going to spend a little bit of time starting to do that. Um, and when you feel like you're no longer kind of counting in your head, then you can move on to a body scan. So you start with your feet and um, you work your way up through your body. So you're just starting. And so I'm going to move through it quickly because I'm just demonstrating it. So just kind of breathing, three seconds in, three seconds out. You feel okay, and I'm moving up towards my knees. I know when I'm stressed, my knees tend to hurt a little bit more, and also when it's a little bit colder out. So I'm paying attention to that too. There's not too much tension today. And I'm moving up to my stomach, 
there's a little bit of tension, but only because I tend to be more nervous <laughs> when I'm presenting. So I'm just recognizing that, and I've already got a reason why I experienced it. So moving up a little bit higher, and I'm checking not just you know diaphragm, chest, but also my back. I carry a lot of tension in my back and in my shoulders. So if I'm doing any exercises, I'm gonna spend time, you know, warming up or cooling down, just kind of doing rotations and different stretches. And then I'm checking my head too. And you know, if my jaw is hurting, it's because sometimes I do punch like when I'm stressed or tired. So that's an indicator for me too. Head feels okay, moving back down. And that's basically a body scan. Um, some things that you'll want to consider when you're doing this, um, you know, is this a, a high stress period of time for family or generally in society? I would say yes. Um, you know, how are things on the home front? You know, is it, is it relatively peaceful? Are things a bit more tense? Um, how are things at work? Are you carrying more than what's necessary? Because you know, oftentimes for us, that's expected. It's expected and we kind of, you know, proactively take on more work. Um, you know, are there any current circumstances that might cause stress? Uh, and then um, we all have our own personal signs. So for me, you know, I mentioned sometimes I'll, I'll like tense up my jaw, so I'll clench a little bit. So I'm working on like, you know, relaxing it, stretching it. Um, I'll get tension between my, between my eyebrows, so I'm relaxing that as well, shoulders. So I kind of know all the points. Um, the other one that she mentioned was hair. So, you know, on hair day for me, that could be like a good three hours. I'm actually checking and looking at the ends. Am I, am I losing hair? Is it graying fast or whatever? And um, also nails. So in my culture, we look at our nails for health. So are they brittle? You know, is the nail bed getting a little bit darker? How does it look? How does it feel? And so these are, these are kind of signs for me as well. Um, so I would say, you know, start with a body scan like this is a really good thing to do once a week she made some really good suggestions like exercising and eating well and all that but um but also you're doing a body scan and kind of considering you know am i taking on more than necessary and um and using that as kind of a starting point so that would be my presentation for today <laughs>